Just like its neighbor Iceland, the Faroe Islands have stunning landscapes that cannot be seen anywhere else in the world. The villages in mountainous locations or near the coast, large cliffs, waterfalls, lakes, and snowy fjords. One of the most impressive cliffs is the one you see from Milingur Mountain, north of Stremoy Island. A hard-to-reach place, but well worth it for these beautiful views. First, it rises steeply, with grass-covered terrain in a vibrant green, and then descends vertically toward the ocean. Many amazing places like this await you on these islands. In the Faroe Islands, the weather isn't extremely cold, but there can be a lot of fog and strong winds. Much of its territory is filled with mountains like this, with sloping, uneven terrain, huge cliffs, and rocky areas. The Faroe Islands are a unique case in the world, as they are considered a nation within the Kingdom of Denmark. They are an archipelago of 18 islands located in the North Atlantic between the United Kingdom, Norway, and Iceland. They self-govern in almost all aspects except for defense, foreign relations, legal system, and currency policy. Regarding their history and culture, due to their geographic location, they have developed their own unique identity over the centuries, something that also happens with nearby islands like Iceland. Stay with me to learn how life is lived in the Faroe Islands, the must-see places, the most isolated villages where you won't believe people still live, the customs of the inhabitants, and their traditions. If you are Faroese or have visited the islands, write in the comments about other places to visit or tell us about your experience. 1. This is one of the incredible landscapes you can see in the Faroe Islands. The town you see is called Klaxvik, which, despite being small, is the second most populous locality in the Faroe Islands. This town has been inhabited since the Viking era. In fact, ancient Viking farm ruins have been found in the area. At the beginning of the 20th century, it had fewer than 100 inhabitants, and now it has around 5,000. Most people in Klaxvik are involved in fishing, as it is the largest port in the Faroe Islands, accounting for 30% of the territory's production. Some people work in the service industry, while others work at Faroya Bjor, a company that manufactures beer and other beverages. As you can imagine, life is very peaceful in this town. Furthermore, temperatures are not as low as you might think. In January, the coldest month, temperatures range from 39 to 43 degrees Fahrenheit, and in the summer, they range between 48 and 54 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see, the town is located in a valley surrounded by mountains, called Mirkjanoirarfal, Hafhal, Halgafeli, and Klakur. Due to this location, it has experienced rock slides and avalanches throughout its history. Two, this is Kalsoy Island, located northeast of the Faroe Islands, another place so stunning it seems like something from a movie. With less than 100 inhabitants, and like other islands I'll show you, it's quite isolated. You can only get here from Klaxvik by taking a ferry that lasts about 20 minutes. There are no roads, tunnels, or bridges connecting Kalsoy with other islands. The James Bond movie No Time to Die was filmed here, it's where the villain's lair is located, and it seems like a great choice due to the island's mysterious and foggy appearance. It has tall, steep cliffs, and is an important bird mating area, notably for the curious Atlantic Puffin, which I will also talk about. The island is 11.94 square miles in size, and its highest point measures 2,582 feet. To get around, there is a bus and tunnels, which are very narrow and can be uncomfortable if you haven't driven through them before. In addition to Hussar, Mikla Dalur, Sidra Lalur, and Trelanes, which are the four settlements on the island, Kalsoy is home to the Kalur Lighthouse. 3. Driving in the Faroe Islands is an amazing experience due to the beautiful landscapes, although it can also release adrenaline due to some passages not suitable for novice drivers. The maximum speed is 49.7 miles per hour on main roads and 31.1 in towns. 
There are 372.82 miles of roads in the archipelago, and there are no traffic jams outside the capital. Sheep can often be found resting on the sides of the road, and sometimes crossing from one side to another. While driving, you'll encounter strong winds, long undersea tunnels, and the so-called Faroese fog, which is very common. This fog sometimes affects trips between islands or daily life, as once it descends on an island, driving becomes impossible and visibility is greatly reduced. That's why it's a legal requirement to always turn on the lights when driving. To go to some islands, like Kalsoy, you have to take a ferry and bring your car on it. As you can see, tunnels can be narrow and one way. This one is called Havanasun Tunnel, built in 1967, and it spans 6,955 feet in distance. 4. This is Bainisvord, another of the most amazing cliffs in the Faroe Islands, with its steep incline reaching up to a triangular peak. It stands at 1,539 feet tall, making it the second highest in the islands. It's located in Sudaroy, the southernmost island of the archipelago, between the villages of Lopra and Sumba, where Faroese people have for generations risked their lives climbing down the cliff face in search of birds and eggs, which were once an important part of their diet. For decades, these cliffs have inspired famous Faroese poets such as Paul Joensen, who referred to Bainisvord as the spiritual guardian of the islands. Another famous Faroese poet, Janus Djurhus, used it as a symbol of the island's independence. These are some other incredible cliffs in Sudaroy. The Faroe Islands are of volcanic origin, formed millions of years ago when Greenland and Europe began to separate. These cliffs were shaped over millions of years by the actions of wind, rain, and waves, gradually eroding the rock. The birds you see are mostly northern fulmers, with an estimated 100,000 pairs. There are also European storm petrels, kittiwakes, Atlantic puffins, and common guillemots. Fulmers nest on the rocks and fly in search of squid, shrimp, fish, and jellyfish to eat and to feed their chicks. They nest on the cliffs and mate for life. Puffins are the most numerous species after the fulmer, with an estimated 500,000 pairs across the islands. These birds live in the sea, so you can observe them diving to catch fish if you take boats that venture away from the coast. They create colonies in the cliffs where they have burrows to raise their chicks. Puffins are also a monogamous species, remaining faithful to their partner for life. They choose each other at sea and meet at the cliff colonies during mating season. 5. Wind energy plays a significant role in the Faroe Islands, and you can see large wind turbines in wind farms in certain areas of the islands. In fact, it's expected that within less than 10 years, wind energy will make up the majority of the renewable energy consumed. The Faroe Islands are not connected to mainland Europe via power lines, so they cannot import or export energy. 6. Another spectacular place in the islands is the Mula Foser Waterfall, which translates to Promontory Waterfall. It's 98.4 feet high, with water falling directly into the sea, like something out of a fantasy movie. It's located south of the village of Gasadalur on the island of Vagar. Gasadalur is another picturesque village in the archipelago, with a small population of 11 people. To reach any other villages by land, residents had to take a mountain route more than 1,312 feet high, which has made the village quite isolated and challenging to increase in population. 7. The largest and most populous island in the Faroe Islands is Stremoy, home to the capital of Torshavn, which has about 14,000 inhabitants. The island is mountainous with fjords, lakes, beaches, and massive cliffs. Grass is the predominant vegetation, and there are no naturally occurring trees, though some villages have planted a few. Torshavn is one of the smallest capitals in the world. Much of the population relies on fishing, and you can charter boats to fish for cod, shark, plaice, and other fish. The historical part of Torshavn, called Tinganis, is well worth a visit. 
Here, you'll find small houses with grass roofs and alleyways reminiscent of sailors or fishermen in movies. In the past, local Viking chiefs would gather annually at this site, and today it houses the office of the Prime Minister of the Faroe Islands, as well as other government agencies. Some of the island's best restaurants are also located here. Taking a boat trip allows you to experience the natural beauty of the islands. Typically, the captains of these boats share stories about local landmarks and natural features during the tour. These trips showcase impressive rock formations and basalt cliffs. 8. In Kvivik, west of Stremoy, you'll find the so-called Kvivik igloos, small prefabricated houses with traditional grass roofs that provide insulation. These houses were designed with environmental respect in mind, also providing a place for birds to nest. As you can see, they have a hexagonal shape and somewhat resemble a hobbit house from the Lord of the Rings. 9. The second largest island in size and population is Aesteroy. It is extremely mountainous with 66 isolated peaks, including Slaita Rotindur, the highest point in the islands at 2,887 feet. On a clear day, you can see Vatnahokal, Iceland's largest glacier, from here. Aesteroy is home to the beautiful coastal town of Lervik, with fewer than 1,000 inhabitants, and Fuglafjordur, known as the Bird Fjord. 10. Litla Dimun is the smallest island in the archipelago, uninhabited and covering less than 0.386 square miles. The second smallest is Kultur, which, as far as we know, is inhabited by just one farmer who receives mail and other deliveries via a government-funded helicopter. 11. Besides the stunning landscapes, you can also see the northern lights in the Faroe Islands, although it's not the best location on the planet due to its more southern latitude. The best time is in the winter, from November to February, on clear nights with low temperatures, especially below zero. Another advantage of traveling to the islands in winter is that you'll find fewer tourists if you prefer peace and quiet, although the weather will be worse. 12. Summers in the Faroe Islands are short, cool, and windy, while winters are long, quite cold, and wet. Throughout the year, temperatures range from 33.8 to 53.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Rarely do they drop below 28.4 degrees or rise above 57.2 degrees. 13. The status of the Faroe Islands is unique in the world, as the country is within the Kingdom of Denmark. This archipelago was colonized in the 10th century by Nordic Viking migrants, although it is believed that it could have been inhabited by Celtic settlements earlier. Their language, Faroese, is one of the three insular Scandinavian languages that descends from the ancient Nordic language. It is a unique language that has been modified with words from English and Irish, among other languages. The Faroese are the natives of the Faroe Islands, most of them of Scandinavian and Celtic origin. Due to the island's isolation, they have maintained much of their traditions over the years. In addition to whale and puffins, one of the most peculiar Faroese dishes is dried fish, which can sometimes be seen hanging outside Faroese houses. 14. Across the Faroe Islands, near the villages, one can see the highland cows with large horns and a thick brown coat. This is a hardy breed, prepared to withstand cold and rainy conditions with the ability to hibernate. The meat is considered high quality. The domestic animals of the Faroe Islands are the result of 1,200 years of breeding in isolation, so many of them cannot be found in other parts of the world. The Faroese pony, or horse, is small and strong, standing 45 to 49 inches tall, good for work and resistant to the cold. Currently, there are slightly less than 100 individuals of this breed, having been very close to extinction when in 1960 only four remained. The sheep are also small, with long, white or black fur, and there are many of them. In fact, there are more sheep than people. It is estimated that there are about 70,000. 15. Cape Enneberg on the island of Vidoy is the highest cliff in the islands and the second highest in Europe, with an impressive 2,474 feet. It is the northernmost point of the Faroe Islands. If you want to visit it, you can go by boat in the summer, 
to also see the bird colony that inhabits the area. 16. One of the most traditional dishes in the islands is puffins, although there are currently restrictions on their hunting due to the decreasing population. The traditional way of hunting them is from land, using the phlegostong, a net between two thin arms attached to a long pole. Fulmars are also hunted in August. The chicks fall from the fjord nests and, unable to fly, they end up in the water, making it easy to catch them with nets. 17. The most controversial practice in the Faroe Islands is the hunting of pilot whales and various species of dolphins, known as grindrap. Defenders of this tradition, which has lasted for over a thousand years, argue that it is a source of food and economic sustenance for the inhabitants. There is no hunting season, although it usually takes place from June to October. The use of harpoons, firearms, or spears is prohibited at sea, so hunters have to sacrifice the whales and dolphins on the beaches, causing the waters to be bathed in blood. As happened in Iceland, whale-watching tourism could replace hunting as a source of economic resources. 18. There are still traditional turf-roofed houses in the Faroe Islands, just like in Iceland. This Nordic tradition has existed since the first settlers of the Viking Age. When they arrived, there weren't many trees on the islands, but turf was abundant. These houses are constructed with pieces of turf, to which wood or stone can be added, helping to insulate against the cold. One problem with these traditional houses is that they require constant maintenance and don't withstand heavy rain. However, those built recently are well prepared, providing natural insulation from the cold and saving electricity. To give you an idea of what houses looked like over 100 years ago, here is a traditional house from 1898 made of rocks and turf. 19. On the island of Mykines, the westernmost of the archipelago, there is a wide variety of migratory seabirds, including the puffin I've already mentioned. You'll find many nests of puffins and other seabird species like gannets, making it a true paradise for bird watchers. To get to Mykines, you must take a ferry from Storvagur, which usually travels twice a day if the weather is favorable. Due to the island's inaccessibility, it currently has only 16 permanent residents. 20. Lake Zorvaksvatn is a natural wonder that will surprise you with a curious optical illusion. From a certain angle, it appears to be above the ocean, as if floating. In addition to this, you will be impressed by the Bosta la Fosser waterfall. The hike to the lake takes approximately an hour, starting at Mjovagor Church. 21. Tjornavik is one of the oldest villages in the Faroe Islands. Viking graves from 950 have been discovered here, proving it has been inhabited since the arrival of the first settlers on the islands. With around 70 inhabitants, the village is situated in a location that could have been inspiration for a Viking movie or series. 22. This is Drangarnir, two strange rock formations between Vagar and the islet of Tindholmur also one of the most photographed places in the Faroe Islands. The two cliffs are called Stori Drangur and Litli Drangur. Tindholmur, the islet, has a striking irregular cliff and an almost vertical peak that must be frightening for people with vertigo just by looking at it. Legend has it that a family lived there long ago, and while the father was fishing, an eagle snatched his son and took him to its nest, located on one of the peaks. The mother climbed to the peak, but found the child severely injured. He died after being rescued. It is said that the family moved away, and since then, no one has lived on Tindulmur. 23. Saksun is a beautiful isolated village in the north of Kalsoy Island. With fewer than 20 inhabitants and an impressive location, its photos frequently appear on social media. There's a statue of the seal woman Kopakonan here. According to local legend, seals were men who willingly sought death in the ocean. Once a year, they could return to land, remove their skins, and enjoy life as human beings. 24. In Kirkubor, on Stremoy, there is the oldest inhabited wooden house in the world. 
It has been home to 17 generations of the same family, and due to its importance, some parts of the house have been turned into a museum open to the public, as it is considered a cultural treasure. Nearby are St. Olav's Cathedral and Magnus Cathedral, both very old buildings. 25. Nolsoy is located just 20 minutes by ferry from the capital. Here you can witness incredible night shows performed by petrels, black and white seabirds. Additionally, you can hire a guide to hike through the hills to the cliffs where the birds are found. Another point of interest in this area is the capes of Oknastangi and Bordan, where two lighthouses were built. The population on this island is around 230 inhabitants. 26. Skuvoy is an island with only 37 inhabitants, named after the Skuas birds that seek refuge and nest there until they return to the sea in the fall. It is also a nesting site for puffins. The island can only be visited for a day, as you won't find any accommodation services. So, you can go bird watching and then spend the night on the island of Sandoy. During the first week of June, locals collect eggs, as they are an ingredient in the region's typical cuisine. 27. Raced is a traditional process for preparing meat, especially lamb. The term means roasted, and the procedure involves hanging the meat to dry on the ceilings of houses, a method that dates back many years and is closely related to the availability of food on the islands. It can be used for fish, sheep, and even whales or birds. 28. One issue in the Faroe Islands is that there are very few women. So, men have had to look for wives in countries like Thailand or the Philippines. There are currently around 300 Thai and Filipino women living here. The low number of women is due to many Faroese women choosing to live abroad. So, the new inhabitants of the islands must face a cultural change and a new language. But they are also well received, as people are very open to those who move to live here. 29. The Kaproder Boat Race is the national sport. There have been rowing competitions on the island since 1930. Nowadays, these competitions follow a regular routine and are held in seven different locations during weekends in July and August. These races are part of a regional festival called Stevna, which includes many other activities. The first regatta is held in Klaksvik, and the last one takes place in Torshavn, the day before the national day called Olavzoka. So it does not always happen on Saturday, but on July 28th, whatever day it falls on. 30. Faroese music is traditionally vocal, without the use of instruments. Only in Torshavn were violins used. During the 20th century, with the growth of trade, imported musical instruments began to be used, although rural villages remained attached to the traditions of chain dancing and ballads. 31. TB Tvoroiri is the oldest football club in the islands, founded in 1892. Since 2020, this team became a member of the Club of Pioneers, which brings together a network of old football clubs. As you can see, football fields can be in stunning locations. The one you see is in Eidi, a village in Esteroy. As an autonomous territory, the Faroe Islands have a men's and women's national football team that participates in the European Championship and World Cup qualifiers, although they have never reached the final stage. 32. The Faroese Parliament is called Logting and is one of the oldest in the world, with its origin in the Viking era around the year 1000. It has 33 members from various political groups. There is virtually no corruption in the Faroe Islands, just like in Denmark, one of the least corrupt countries. 33. There are various historical Faroese figures. One is Grimor Kamban, the first Viking of the Faroe Islands. The Faroese saga says that he was a Nordic Viking who escaped the tyranny of the Viking king Harald. Although this is an error, as Harald ruled at the end of the 9th century, and the first Faroese arrived after the year 825. Zygmundur Brestesen, a Faroese Viking chief responsible for bringing Christianity to the islands in 999, is one of the main characters in the Faroese saga. Additionally, there is Nils Ryberg Finsen, a Faroese Icelandic doctor and scientist who won the Nobel Prize in Medicine and Physiology in 1903. 34. 
The Faroe Islands are not an independent country because they depend on the Kingdom of Denmark for matters such as international relations, politics, or military defense, although there are many reasons they could be called a country. First, there is the territory, isolated from Denmark and mainland Europe. Geographically, the Faroe Islands are considered part of Europe, but are not part of the European Union. In contrast, Denmark has been part of the European Union since 1973. They also make their own trade decisions concerning their economic relations with other countries. For example, when the European Union imposed sanctions on Russia in 2014 for its invasion of Donbass, the Faroes exported salmon to Russia. However, in 2022, the Faroese Parliament did approve sanctions against Russia for the invasion of Ukraine. The Faroe Islands also have their own culture and traditions, customs, and cuisine. They have their own national sports teams, parliament, and ministries. They differ from many European countries in cultural aspects, such as fertility. The Faroe Islands have one of the highest birth rates in Europe, with an average of 2.4 children per woman. In contrast, in the Kingdom of Denmark, they have 1.6 children per woman. There is also the Faroese language, which is more similar to Icelandic and Old Norse than to Danish. 35. You may wonder what you need to do to travel to the Faroe Islands. Citizens with passports from Nordic countries do not need a passport to enter, but must show an identity document from their country, allowing them to stay in the Faroes indefinitely. Citizens with passports from the European Union or Schengen countries do not need a visa or permits to visit the islands, but must show their passport or an identification document from their country. The other non-European nationalities that require a visa to enter are the same as for Denmark. For tourism purposes, citizens with passports from Argentina, Mexico, Brazil, or the United States do not need a visa. If you decide to go to the Faroes, carefully review the requirements on the official website of Denmark. If you want to go to the Faroe Islands to work and live and are not from a Nordic country, you will need to apply to the Danish Immigration Service and have a 40-hour-per-week job offer in a field that needs to be filled. Around 90% of the Faroe's exports are fishery products, so this is the sector that generates the most employment. Have you visited the Faroe Islands or are you Faroese? Leave in the comments other facts or places to visit. If you want to learn about an incredible country that is also very close, visit this video about Iceland. Give us a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe with the bell activated so you don't miss other videos like this.